Hi friends, this is Eunice Leong, or some students call me Puan Leong. Um, I got a feedback from a student saying that uh, he or she doesn't really know how to solve calculation questions, uh, especially in physics. I think this is majority of the students' problem as well. So I decided to do a video, and the focus of this particular video will be to solve impulse and also impulsive force questions. So I'm going to be showing step-by-step -step instruction on how to do uh, the questions, the problem-solving part, because all right, calculation questions are questions that students love a lot when they see. They prefer calculating instead of uh, concept questions. All right, it's loved to be seen by students, but it's going to be very difficult to get full marks. Why? Because students only see the numbers. They didn't really go and analyze the words carefully, and hence not getting the physics concept correctly. Um, most of the time, students know which formula to use but because the physics concept of the questions is not being uh, carefully analyzed they get the substitution wrong and hence the final answer will be wrong or the unit will be wrong so in this particular uh, video all right i'm going to show you how to problem solve the questions these are the skills that you actually need to know so learn how i analyze do the steps that i do and never ever skip steps even in exam don't ever skip steps no matter how smart or how genius you are try not to skip steps to avoid careless mistakes so these are the problem solving steps all right, first analyze the problem statement by preparing pictorial presentation. You have to change from words to symbols, most important physical quantity symbols, clarify the information, and identify what the problem is trying to find. Then after that, analyze the motion, all right, because we are dealing with impulse and impulsive force. So you need to analyze the motion by drawing a diagram and it's important also for you to determine the direction because impulse and impulsive force, it's actually a vector quantity. Vector quantity means quantity that has magnitude and direction. So in this particular case, you need to make sure that you get the direction correct, hence putting the correct sign convention. And then you have to identify the formula to be used and solve the problem carefully and assess the result by making sure the units are correct and the positive negative sign is correct so let's get started okay so let's go to uh, my whiteboard okay so before we actually start with uh, calculation questions all right i'm going to be briefing recap a little bit regarding impulse okay so impulse is actually the change in momentum so being that it is a change in momentum, therefore impulse formula is actually mv minus mu. All right. So and the SI unit for impulse is kg ms uh, ms negative one. So this is the short form first. So in this particular case, you have to understand that because impulse is a change in momentum now. There's a few things that you have to understand is that number one, mv, v and u are actually both velocity. Okay, both of it are velocity. So because that it is a velocity, it is actually a vector quantity. Okay, even for uh, momentum and impulse, they are also vector quantity. Vector quantity means it has magnitude, which is the value. Okay, and it also has its direction. All right, what does this particular direction actually mean? And why is it so important to keep emphasizing that the physical quantities are vector quantities? Is because if it has direction, you have to make sure that the direction of motion for the object actually follows back uh, the sign convention, which means uh, for me, all right, for me, my direction of sign convention, I follow back the graph direction, which is uh, the xy graph, all right? So going towards the right is a positive x, going towards the left is a negative x-axis, going upwards is positive y, and going downwards, it is actually negative y. So my sign convention, whenever I do a calculation question, it actually goes back to this similar sign convention, whereby right is positive, 
left is negative, going up is positive, and going down is negative. So that is my sign convention that I always use. So velocity, momentum, impulse, you have to be very sensitive with the positive and negative sign of your value. All right, the direction matters itself. All right, so the other one is uh, let's get the formula for uh, impulsive force. All right, so I'm gonna type this here. All right, so impulsive force is actually the definition is actually rate of change of momentum. So rate of change of momentum means all right, uh, mv minus mu over the time. So I'm going to write that instead so to make it easier for all of you to see. So that is divided by time. All right, so SI unit for in, uh, impulsive force, all right, because it's a force, so the SI unit is actually Newton. All right, just the symbol N. Or you can use kg ms negative 2. Alright, so either one of these units are acceptable for impulsive force. Now, the other thing that you need to understand regarding uh, impulse and impulsive force. Alright, so let's just say regarding impulse because it's a change in momentum. Okay, so I'm going to start drawing here. Now, if let's just say I have a ball. Okay, this particular ball actually hits a wall. Okay, this particular ball actually hits a wall. So the ball before it hits the wall, right before it hits the wall, that is the initial velocity of the ball. And hence, that is also the initial momentum of the ball, which is mu. Okay, so when the ball actually hits, that is where uh, the impulsive force of the wall will cause the ball to change direction. Alright, so this is the impulsive force. Okay, and the ball will actually move with another velocity. So after collision, the velocity is using the uh, symbol of V, which represents final velocity. And hence, this will represent the final momentum, which is MV. So you have to understand that when we deal with impulse, impulsive force, and uh, later on the conservation of momentum, the velocity and the before and after velocity is always talking about immediately before the collision and immediately after the collision. All right, so it is before touching the wall. Okay, so this thing you have to really understand. Okay, so we with that being clear, I'm gonna start showing you guys a question. All right, so I'm gonna clear the canvas here. I'm gonna bring a question onto my whiteboard. Alright, so I have this particular question over here. I'm going to enlarge this up so that everyone can see it bright and clear. Okay, now, so the first question from the problem solving skill is to actually analyze the question, what the question wants, turn words into pictorial and symbols. Alright, so let's start analyzing this particular question first. I have one particular habit is I always highlight whatever I need and whatever I need to understand. So here we have a 60 kg residence jumps from the first floor onto a burning house. Now, the velocity just before landing on the ground is actually 6 meter per second. So in this particular case, I'm going to start drawing first, okay? So um, when I draw, I don't go and draw a house burning and whatsoever. I'll draw as simple as possible to avoid myself from confusing my, my uh, analysis, all right? So I'm just going to draw the person jumping down, straight down to the ground, okay? And just before hitting the ground, it's... His velocity is 6 meter per second, so u equals to 6 meter per second. Alright, so over here, if you notice, just before hitting the ground, his velocity is actually moving downwards. So in this case, my initial velocity is negative following my sign convention of downwards negative, upwards positive. Okay, and normally when you hit, when you jump from a certain height and you jump onto the ground, you don't bounce back up because we humans, we are not the bouncing material. And the floor is actually a solid hard ground. So you won't be able to bounce back up. So immediately after the uh, residents hit the ground, he will stop immediately. Alright, so the final velocity of the person 
is actually 0 meter per second. Alright, so I've analyzed the whole entire situation and I'm going to write down my information. Mass of the guy is 60 kg. Initial velocity of the guy is negative 6 meter per second. Final velocity is 0 meter per second. Alright, even though I've written at my diagram, but I, was, I have a tendency to draw uh, list out still. Okay, so now let's look at the first question A. Alright, question A asks us to calculate the impulse when he hits the ground. Alright, so impulse formula, impulse, impulse formula is the change in momentum, so mv minus mu. Alright, so over here, mass is 60, final velocity v is 0, that's the reason why I wrote everything down. Okay minus by 60 initial velocity is written negative 6 so i'm going to substitute negative 6 straight into here so 60 minus 0 is 0 minus 60 times negative 6 that would be negative 360 so my final answer would be negative times negative that would be positive so 360 kg ms negative 1 so that is my impulse value all right, and notice that this is positive because impulse would be going back upwards. It's from the uh, floor towards the uh, person. Okay, so that is my first calculation. Okay, now second calculation B. The question actually asks for the impulsive force on the resident's leg if he bends. So which means when he reach the ground, the guy actually bends his leg and takes 0 0.5 seconds to stop. Again, you see the word stop. Stop means the final velocity is 0 after he hits the ground. So for part B, right, this is a bit not that bright. I'm going to use a dark blue. Okay, so part B over here, the time taken is 0 0.5 seconds. So impulsive force formula is the rate of change of momentum because I've already calculated impulse over here and the change of momentum. So I'm just going to write delta P, which is the change in momentum divided by time. So over here, I just substitute what I have calculated from the first part. So that would be 360 divided by the time, which is 0 0.5. So over here, let's get my calculator 360 divided by 0 0.5 i get 720 this is force so the unit is newton all right again this is positive because the impulsive force would be from the floor up towards the person from the ground up towards the person going up is positive so my answer is positive it actually is correct by the physics concept now c C says that, again, calculate the impulsive force when the resident does not bend his leg. Ooh, he doesn't bend his leg, which means straight downwards. All right. So, and stops at a time of 0 0.05 seconds. Stop even faster. 0 0.05 seconds. Now, when the time actually reduces even faster, we know that the impulsive force is going to be greater. So our calculation should be even more than the first one, the, the, the calculation of the impulsive force that we got here, 720. So let's see whether is it greater. So impulsive force is the change of momentum over time, which is equals to, again, take from the first question, the change of momentum, which is impulse, 360 divided by the time is 0 0.05 again with my calculator 0 0.05 that would be 7200 newton of impulsive force now uh, just now we analyzed that if the time taken is actually much more shorter our impulsive force is actually greater so from this calculation we can see all right from this particular calculation we can actually see that let me highlight this when the time is longer, 0 0.05 seconds, the impulsive force is 7,200 Newton. But when the time is 0 .0, uh, 0 0.5 seconds, the impulsive force is 720 Newton. Alright, so this actually uh, agrees back with the concept that we understand, which is the shorter the time of impact, the bigger the impulsive force. 
All right, it agrees back with this particular physics concept that we know. All right, so question D says that what is the advantage of bending his leg upon landing? All right, what is the advantage that he bends his leg upon landing? So bending the leg is at B, part B. So when bending his leg upon landing, the time taken is 0 0.5 seconds. So it's much more longer compared to 0 0.05. And the impulsive force is actually smaller. So to answer this particular question, I'm going to type this. Okay, I'm, oops, I'm going to move this here and I'm going to type the answer out over here. All right, so for question D, all right, when he bends his leg, the time of impact becomes longer. This actually reduces the impulsive force, hence reducing his chances of getting injuries during the jump. Alright, so if you want to explain physics concept wise, all right, make sure you have the keywords. So what are the keywords? The keywords is the time of impact becomes longer all right, and this reduces the impulsive force, and hence the effect of this is reduces his chances of getting injury. So make sure when you answer the explanation uh, part, you have to answer in terms of physics concept. All right, so that is one question. Okay, um, I'm gonna try to answer another question. Okay, so let me go and grab another question over. Okay, so I'm going to take this particular question and I'm going to paste it over here. Let's see. Okay, so that's my question. Okay, now let's analyze the question once again. A trolley with a mass of 500 gram is at rest. On a smooth surface, the trolley is given a horizontal impulse at 5 newton per second. What is the velocity of the trolley after the impact? Okay, now let's uh, analyze this in terms of words and also diagram. So the mass of the trolley is 500 gram. Now, seeing that this is gram and the impulse is in newton, I'm going to change it to the SI unit for mass, which is actually kg. So I'm going to directly change it there, 0 0.5 kg. And starts at rest. Resting means it doesn't move. Alright, so the initial velocity is actually 0 meter per second. On a smooth surface, which means there's no friction, and the trolley is given a horizontal impulse of 5 newton second. So impulse I is 5 newton second. Calculate the velocity after the impact. Okay, so in this particular case, I'm going to draw a diagram now. I'm going to represent a circle, all right, as the object, okay? So in this particular case, initially it's being at rest, so initial velocity is 0 meter per second. Okay, I'm going to assume that the push is actually towards the right so that my uh, value is going to be positive, so that's my impulse. And once it's being pushed, obviously the trolley will actually move towards the right hand side with a velocity okay so it should come out positive in this particular case so impulse formula is change of momentum so that is mv minus mu so impulse over here is 5 newton seconds so I just directly put it there 5 the mass is 0 0.5, final velocity is what we want to find, minus, again, the mass is uh, 0 0.5, initial velocity at rest means it's 0. So in this particular case, this term goes to 0. Alright, so 5 equals to 0 0.5 newton, uh, 5 velocity v. So I have a tendency to actually put my... Uh, 
symbol that I want to find on the left hand side. So that would be 0 0.5v equals to 5. No difference. So in this particular case, v would be 5 divided by 0 0.5. So in this case, calculator 5 divided by 0 0.5, that would be 10 meter per second and it's a positive value. So that is the velocity of the impact after uh, sorry after the impact. Alright, so that is one question. I'm gonna do another question before I wrap things up. So again I'm gonna clear this canvas. Okay let me get another challenging question out. I wonder if this is challenging. Okay. I don't have much of a question choices, so I'm just going to copy and paste whatever questions that I have right now. Okay. Now, let's analyze these questions once again. A horizontal impulse of 500 newton second is exerted onto a stationary trolley with a mass of 2 kg. What is the velocity of the trolley after the impact? Again, it's similar to the questions just now. Okay, so let's start. Alright, horizontal impulse. So I equals to 500 newton second exerted onto a stationary trolley. Again, initial velocity U is 0 meter per second. Mass of the trolley is 2 kg. What is the velocity of the trolley after the impact? So you want to find V. So again, drawing the diagram. Okay, to entertain myself, I'm going to draw a trolley. So initial velocity is zero. Someone suddenly exert a push force. All right, pushing this. So a sudden impulse. Therefore, this particular impulse will cause the trolley to move in front with a velocity v. So again, formula for impulse is mv minus mu. So the impulse over here is 500 equals to mass, it's 2 kg already, so I don't have to substitute anything. V, I'll just leave it as V, minus 2 kg multiplies by U, which is 0. So again, this term goes to 0. Rearranging this two, because I like to put my subtract on the left, equals to 500. So V equals to 500 divided by 2. Okay, I don't want to use my mind to calculate. So 250 meter per second. Well, that's fast. Alright, so the velocity right now uh, of the trolley after the impact is 250 meter per second. So I've already did this particular calculation. I hope all of you can understand this. If you still can't understand, do let me know and I'll see what I can do. Alright, so um, to wrap up my particular video, Okay, so I hope all of you have already understand how to actually answer uh, impulse and impulsive force question. Alright, do more practice. Use the problem solving method that I taught just now and uh, for you to actually understand and master the calculation question. But please, please remember, always analyze the question step by step. Get the diagram out, draw it big and understand it properly. Alright, so before I end the class, if you really like my video, alright, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Alright, so till the next video, alright, I'll see everyone. Bye!